Welcome everyone to our Indigenous Knowledge Keeper series. My name is Lisa and I am the Indigenous Student Support Specialist here at George Rowe College and I will be your co-host for today. Thank you for joining us for our Indigenous Knowledge Keeper series featuring Joanne Robertson. Um, so a little bit of a background behind the series, it is comprised of members from in and outside of our community who hold expertise in a vast landscape of topics and are in all stages of life learning. The series is open to the entire community in order to facilitate a deeper understanding of Indigenous worldviews, culture, spirituality, philosophies, and ways of knowing and being. Today we welcome Joanne Robertson. I will now pass it along to jo Jolene May, the Indigenous Student Support Worker, to deliver our land acknowledgement. Ani, my name is Jolene May. I'm the Indigenous Student Support Worker here at George Brown, and I am Ojibwe from Whitefish River, Birch Island. Um, I would like to recognize that George Brown College is located on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and other Indigenous peoples who have lived here over time. We are grateful to share this land as treaty people who learn, work, and live in the community. Um, I would like to acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13. As treaty people, I encourage everyone to learn more about Indigenous land rights and treaties, specifically Treaty 13, the Niagara Treaty, and the District One Spoon are good ones to learn. Okay, uh, so uh, Joanne Robertson is a uh, bald eagle clan and her communities are at Tikkamis uh Essex County and uh, Algoma. Um, she earned her degree in fine arts from Algoma University and Shingwak Kanilmeg Gamig at age, by the age of 50. This is where she met her Nokmis, which is, um, uh, which translates as, um, or grandmother, uh, jo Josephine um, Mendeman. Um, she helped coordinate Nokmis's water walks um, and has been since um, uh, 2011. She continues to support water walks through live GPS spotting to ensure the water and water walkers are safe. She lives near a river in Northern Ontario and is currently working on a third book for the water. Um, with that as a brief bio, um, I will now pass it on to uh, Joanne and we can get started. Hey, Miigwech, I'm just gonna share my screen. Um, I can get to the top up here. My toolbar is gone at the top. There's so many people on the screen. Um, Hmm. Tell me if you, I'm just going to go to the thing. Tell me if you can see it because my toolbar is gone. Can you see my screen? Nope, not yet. Okay. Oh, there we are. Share content. Okay. Screen. Start broadcast. There we go. There. Yes. See it now? Yes. Thanks for okay, me. perfect. Okay, I'll get going because I have a lot to share with you today. So, Boju, hi everyone. Misko and Nango Kwe and Dijnikaz, Nigazi and Dodem. My English name is Joanne Robertson and my spirit name is Red Star and I'm Bald Eagle Clan. And I have ties to three communities. Um, the first one is in Essex County in Southern Ontario, where I was adopted as a baby and raised uh, by my Canadian family on a farm. Uh, my dad was French and my mom is French and German. And you can see my Charlie Brown head there. And right behind me is my grandpa driving his team of ponies. And um, he was my mom's dad and he was German and his wife, my grandma was French. And those are some of my cousins on my mom's side of the family. But if you count all my other cousins on my dad's side, Plus all of my other cousins that I met later on in life would probably fill up four more wagons. So I also have ties to a Tikamekshing and Anishinaabek, which is by Sudbury. As I mentioned, I was adopted, so I wasn't raised in a Tikamekshing, but this is where a lot of my birth family are from. I was born Robin Lynn Patatagoose, and this picture is of me, four of my sisters, and our niece, uh, our youngest sister, right beside me there, is. Uh, 
from Cutler and our niece on the far right is our, lives in Rama. And I met my birth family in my late twenties and I'm in my sixties now. So I've known them um, for more than half of my life now. I've never met my birth father, but he was apparently Irish, French and English six feet, two inches tall with curly blonde hair and blue eyes. So if you see anyone matching that description, uh, tell them I'd like to meet him. And the last community that I have ties to is where I live now and where I've lived for the past 30 years. It's in the Algoma region in Northern Ontario. And we live north of Sault Ste. Marie on the Gouli River and the Gouli River drains into Lake Superior. And I live here with my husband, Chris, and um, our dog, Lucy, who loves water and loves mud even more. And Lucy came to us um, the spring before we learned that Nokomis was sick. And she's been uh, with me through really hard times. And she also shares a birthday with Nokomis. Um, so when I was thinking about Lucy, I thought back to when the 2011 water walk was uh, about to begin, which reminded me of um, our dog, Carl. So the day before Anopimus was set to leave on the Four Directions water walk, which I'll explain more about, um, we had to run back to my house because at the last minute, because I'd forgot to bring something uh, to her that she was going to need for her journey. So our dog at the time was Carl, this is her, and she was a beautiful Akbash and she was, she looked like a polar bear. She was huge, but she was very affectionate and very gentle. So Josephine Baugh had a black skirt on, so you can probably guess where this is going. When we were getting ready to leave, I looked over at her skirt and it looked like a mohair sweater. Carl's white hairs were sticking out all over her skirt like a defensive porcupine. I rushed to grab my lint roller and started furiously rolling up and down Nokomis's legs, trying to get all the white fur off. She touched my arm and said, twin, calm down. Then she gently and calmly said, these are memories now. They'll remind me of you when I'm away. I threw out my lint roller after that day. So Bidaske Ba or uh, Grandma Josephine wrote this bio I'm about to share with you by herself. She gave it to me a couple of years before she walked onto the spirit world and she said that I would need it one day. So in her own words, here we go. Josephine was born on Manitoulin Island in the little town of Wukbamakong, a reservation at the end of the island. She was born on February 21st, 1942 in her grandmother's little house and was brought into the world by this grandmother. She spent seven years in residential school in Spanish from seven years old to 14 years old. This is where she first heard the English spoken by squealing women or nuns. As the years progressed, she married and had seven pregnancies. Five of them survived. She now lives in Thunder Bay, where she carries on the work with water and teachings about how she and other women have walked with the water around the Great Lakes and beyond from 2003 to 2017. As the last water walk ended for her, she now goes to communities and talks about the importance of water to schools and organizations. This be, appears to be her life work now that she can't walk anymore and spends time with the new book, Water Walker by Joanne Robertson. They have teamed together in raising awareness about taking care of the environment and especially water. Miigwech, Josephine Mundaman. So I first became friends with Nokomis in school. We both went to Shingwat Kinemage Gimik and Algoma University uh, in Sault Ste. Marie. I graduated in 2010 and she graduated in 2011. In 2019, she was posthumously awarded the Alumni Achievement Award from Algoma University in recognition of her accomplishments. And in this photo is her husband, Andrew on the left, he's my cousin. And um, on the right is their sister, Melvina. And both joined them on their water walks and supported her on her walks. So I'm going to um, begin now from the beginning. In our Anishinaabe creation stories, humans were the last to be created. Some believe that's because we're so special, but my elders taught me it's because we're so dependent. We're dependent on all our rel relatives for life. We were created last because we need all of the creation to learn from and to survive. We're the new kids on the block and we need to learn from all other life how to live, learning from their example. 
By observing, we see that we live in relationship to all other living things on earth. We need to respect that relationship. A tree doesn't need us to live. A plant doesn't need us to thrive. And water doesn't need us to flow. But we need them. We humans do not have sole rights to water. We have a responsibility to respect and protect it for all creation because we depend on all our relatives. So in this photo on the left is my husband stoking the um, evaporator during maple syrup season. And in the top, that's me holding an empty glass for water. Top right, that's um, during the 2016, there was a canoe journey for the water led by Eli George. And in this photo though, it's showing uh, Mike Najwan, who's also very helpful in the water walks and the canoe journeys. And the bottom right, um, there are, um, Lots of our relatives contributed to that little feast. On the bottom right is strawberries and then maple syrup. And then the pancakes were for a while here. We uh, grew a little bit of wheat and we uh, ground it up. So those are pancakes. For this photo, I didn't make our own butter, but I have done that before, shaking the jar for like 20 minutes. But the, um, the plate on the bottom was from a bird's eye maple tree and my dad turned that plate for us. So you can see how much we depend on all of creation um, to live. So we're all connected by water. Water. We people are about 75% water. We drink water, excrete water. We're all born of water. That water goes back to the earth and is taken up by the trees, bears, and berries. We're all responsible for the health of each other. We humans have a responsibility to water to respect it for all life. Grandmother Bidasage Bam and Daman, the water walker, Tara Snide is alive. It has a spirit, it has memory, it carries all our stories. It's alive just like the people, just like people and all our relations, the trees, birds, and plants. So while, while we're talking about water being alive, I just want to quickly mention this. Nokomis never wanted us to drink from plastic water bottles on the road or at gatherings. She also told us never to keep our SEMA or sacred tobacco or medicines in plastic baggies. To prove her point, she'd ask us, what would happen to you if I put you in plastic? I realize there are many communities that have no choice but to drink water from plastic bottles because their water is polluted. But there are many more of us that can drink from a tap without fear. And we can all store our medicines in cloth bags. The very first time I briefly met grandmother Josephine Bauman Dahman. The water walker was in 2007 at a big gathering in Garden River, First Nation, which is by Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. She was there sharing her stories about the water walking work they were doing. And I was there as a volunteer cleaning outhouses and gathering up garbage. By the time Nokomis had, by that time she'd already walked around Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Ontario, and earlier that spring, um, Lake Erie. This is a photo of me and our superhero, and it's the very first photo of us together. I would much later learn that we're cousins being related through her husband, Andrew. And I remember on this day thinking to myself, she's so kind and she's so humble. When Josephine Baugh and I were in university together, Eddie Bob at Benet was one of our professors. He was also grand chief of the Three Fires Medea One Lodge in Bad River, Wisconsin. He founded the Red School House in St. Paul, Minnesota. Education there included spiritual and cultural teachings, like what we were getting at Shingwak Kinemag Egamig when Nokomis and I were students together. He was also one of the founders of the American Indian Movement. And in Indian country, he was often referred to as Burt Reynolds. Betty Baugh walked on November 30th, 2020. He accomplished so much for the people while he walked the earth. But it was in the year 2000 that Nokomis first heard his prophecy about the water. He said, in 30 years time, if we continue with our negligence, ounce for ounce, water is going to cost as much as gold. What are you going to do about it? I'm not sure if you're aware, but in 2021, for the first time in history, water began being traded like gold and oil on Wall Street. The prophecy is coming true. I don't have a good understanding of how the stock market works, but for those of you who enjoy numbers, maybe you could keep your eye on how the trading of water is going, especially around the year 2030. Don't feel bad if you have no idea what I'm talking about. I just thought it's important to mention for those that may know something about it. 
just know that Anokamas and the water walker's eyes, water is absolutely not a commodity or something to make money from. Water is essential to all life, not for those alone who have enough money to pay for it. Water is alive and has a spirit. As a further reminder that water is not a commodity, but alive, I recommend that sometime after our visit today, you take a few minutes to watch my friend Kelsey Leonard's TED Talk called Why Lakes and Rivers Should Have the Same Rights as Humans. She asks us, who is water, not what is water? This way of thinking will help you strengthen your relationship with water. Do you know the water you live near? Do you know it as well as you know your other relatives, as well as you know your auntie or your brother or your sister? After Bidaske bought her the prophecy that said in 30 years time, water is going to cost as much as gold, she looked around. She saw how we are disrespecting the water, wasting it, making it unfit for life. Something she liked to ask when she was invited to speak to communities and classrooms was this question. What would happen if we discontinue our negligence? So what will happen if we start taking better care of the water? If we stop harming the water? That question, what are you going to do about it, stayed with her. A couple years later, she was sitting around a, a table visiting with some women and the idea of water walking began to form. One of the girls said, why don't we walk around Lake Superior carrying a pail of water? They all laughed, but the idea stuck. When we walk for the water, it's an indigenous Nishnabe led ceremony for the water, rooted in Medeoan teachings and protocols. And it's more times than not led by a grandmother. From the time the pail is lifted to the time it touches down at the end of the day, the water keeps moving, flowing nonstop like a river should. A water walk is not a protest, activist action, or a social event. It's not for boasting, a photo op, or a competition. It's all for the love of water and for life. Oh, just wanna, oops, go back to this picture. This was the um, 2011 uh, Southern Sun Dock picture on the left. You see Grandma Josephine Sharon Day who uh, led the Southern Direction walk that, that year and Doreen Day who all, um, wrote the Nibby song if you're familiar with that and her daughter. And then on the right is from the uh, 2021 line three water walk um, for the water that was going to going to be affected by line three and the leader of that walk again was Sharon Day which she's holding the hand drum and she has the face mask on. So in 2011 the water walkers motto would become I will do it for the water. People wrote to me at Central Communications that's what uh, Nokomis used to call me, from all around the world, offering these words up in their own language. French, Spanish, Flemish, Dutch, Mi'kmaq, Odawa, Italian, German, Cree, Mandarin, Turkish, Welsh, and so on. On the left, in 2015, um, I took all of those translations of Nagaj, Ichige, Nibionje, and I designed a t-shirt um, as a fundraiser for the 2015 Water Walk. And on the right is the map of the 2011 Four Directions Water Walk. You can sort of kind of see the Four Directions, the cross. The, on the left in the black is the west route. The red is the southern route. You can barely see um, the yellow bubbles on the right for the eastern route. And the white bubbles north going to Churchill was the uh, northern route. And the blue dots are the supporters who wrote in from around the world. Um, offering up encouragement for the walkers. So, I will do it for the water. Saying the words is different than walking your talk though. Grandmother Josephine Ball walked her talk. I just wanna say a few words about this book that I wrote and illustrated for Nokomis and how I fit into the water walker story. In 2011, I started coordinating her water walks. I initially volunteered to archive the 2011 water walk, knowing that this one was going to be her biggest walk yet. Four water pails moving in from the four salt waters, all heading to Lake Superior, the heart of Turtle Island. So we're at Nokomis's uh, ceremonial lodge in Bad River, Wisconsin, with uh, Grand Chief Eddie Bobbett and Benet, the same elder that spoke of the prophecy about water costing as much as gold. 
So Grand Chief Eddie Ba was speaking to all the people gathered that day, and he began introducing the 2011 water walk from the four directions that was to take place starting that spring. And then he said, if you have any questions, you can ask the coordinator. And then he said my name. In the blink of an eye, I went from my plan of preserving stories to coordinating. I wasn't sure I heard him right, but as soon as he stopped talking, I was surrounded by people. Maybe it was only two people, but it felt like 200, all wanting information about the upcoming water walk. I had spent a lot of time in university with Josephine Baugh the prior three years, and we did a lot of work together, but I'd never water walked before. I wouldn't be lying if I share with you that I was scared. It's just recently that I haven't had to deep breathe into a paper bag when thinking back to the 2011 Four Directions Water Walk. But it's okay to be scared. I loved Grandma Josephine Baugh and the water walkers and the water they carried. So I knew I would do everything I could to keep them safe on the road, even if I didn't know what that would involve exactly. The greater fear I had was this, and it motivates me still today. What if our future grandchildren and the trees and the birds don't have clean water to drink? Thinking about that helps me find the courage to work through my fears and wearing long skirts hides my knocking knees. Coordinating the water walk from my desk in Sault Ste. Marie on the Shinglock Kinemage Gami campus, I scouted ahead for accommodations, food, laundry facilities, more walkers, community feasts, drugstores for band-aids, and Tim Hortons for coffee. We used Facebook to get out the water walkers' immediate needs. 2011 was the year I introduced Spot, the GPS unit on the water pails, seen as the orange dot on the side of the copper water pail in the book. Working in the background, I helped the water walkers the best I could, being available 24 seven, sleeping with my MacBook and phones, my landline and my cell, and working in four time zones. It took me pretty much the whole water walk to figure out how to best help and how to ask for help. By the end, we were a small but committed behind the scenes group of helpers to the water walkers. I received approximately 3000 emails every two days. My email crashed a few times because of the load. You saw this photo a few slides ago, so let me explain. Nokum has had a lot of famous lines, and this one we heard a lot. This is a good one to remember when you know you should do something, but you're scared to do it because you may mess up the first time. I saw a homework card in the store a while back, and it read, you don't have to be fearless. Doing it afraid is just as brave. Another of Nokum's famous sayings was, go with the flow, especially when things did mess up or when things didn't go as us humans planned. Water was and is the leader on water walks. And for us humans, going with the flow can be a hard lesson to learn, especially for us organizers with calendars and for communities with feasts in the oven. Nokomis completed her last big cross country walk in 2017. And one month later, the Water Walker book came out. And that's a story of how I became involved with Nokomis and the Mother Earth Water Walkers. So this is Nokomis standing in the archives at Algoma University. Krista McCracken arranged for us to have a small exhibit there at one point. Myself, Kelsey Leonard, and Stephanie Woodworth have been working on the Waterwalk archives off and on for a few years now. I've just recently started in earnest to put stories down on paper from the 2011 Waterwalk, and Kelsey has collected many interviews from Waterwalkers and supporters. Stephanie researched other Waterwalks that were held that were inspired by Nokomis and the Mother Earth Waterwalkers' work. I believe that there are over 300 of them now. One day, the Waterwalk Archives will be housed at Shinwak Kinemagegamek. Nokomis knew that this was the plan before she passed on, and she was happy that day standing in the exhibit, anxious to see more. So back to the Waterwalks. Here's a map where you can see all of her initial walks that took place from 2003 to 2009. For seven years, they walked for the Great Lakes and along the St. Lawrence River. She left her family and her two cats, Milo and Cranky, and her own comfy bed every spring to do these walks. She walked for the water. She walked for all of us people and our future great-great-grandkids. She also walked for all the plants and animals and fish 
and for Milo and Cranky too. There's, there's Cranky. Did you know that on a hot summer's day, one birch tree drinks two bathtubs full of water? One birch tree. She walked for those birch trees too, hoping they would always have what they need to survive. Lake Superior was her favorite and the first lake they walked around. She said it was the most powerful water. It could be very strong, very gentle, unpredictable, and even sink ships so much as her strength. Listening to her talk about water, it was easy to see that she had a strong relationship with it. Easy to see her love, respect, and gratitude for water. Easy to see how much she loved all of us and all those that depend on the water. Seven generations into the future, she had so much love and so much determination. And here's uh, Lake Superior. I was there one day. So this is the Chippewa River that flows into Lake Superior. And this is during spring thaw. And I wanted to show you an example of how powerful water is. So I'll play this. Traveling with Nokomis while still in her slippers, she would always take her first sip of water in the morning before anything else. And she taught us to say to ourselves with that first sip, I love you, I respect you, I thank you. And to ask ourselves, how am I going to treat you today? Maybe that's something you can start practicing when you get up in the morning with your first sip of water. Maybe when you're brushing your teeth, you can remember, good morning water. Thank you for keeping me and all the trees and animals alive. I promise today to be kind to you and treat you well. I'm not sure if you just heard Lucy barking in the background. That was our Lucy. <laughs> By doing this, you will come to know water better and notice all the lives in the world that depend on water. And you will start to have a stronger relationship with water like grandmother Josephine Baugh. She did a lot of walking for Nibe. Water walking can be grueling when it's hot out and when there's no breeze to cool you off. It's hard work when you have to occasionally carry the water pail and the Eagle staff because there are not enough people to do the work. It's hard walking through construction areas and traffic rushing by can be very dangerous. It's hard not sleeping in your own bed and sleeping very little. It's difficult getting up before the birds and it can be lonely not petting your favorite cat after a hard tiring day of walking the water. Sometimes you miss a hot meal at the end of the day and instead must live on sandwiches on the road. And sometimes you'd like to wash those sandwiches down with your favorite beverage from your favorite coffee shop, but there isn't one in sight and won't be for many days as you walk through dense trees, also known as Tick Central. Imagine living out of a single suitcase for three months, which you can't find because it's in another water walker's car. But it can also be beautiful. Walking in the early dawn hours, it was peaceful. The birds and bugs would just be starting to wake up. There's little traffic on the road that early in the morning and the sun's just starting to peek up on the horizon. Grandma Josephine Baugh and the water walkers enjoy these times the most. This was during the 2017 water walk as they headed towards the Atlantic Ocean. Chuck and Jen Rasmore from uh, Michigan. She also enjoyed visiting communities along the road that offered them a hot evening meal, encouraging words, a place to do their laundry, access to Wi-Fi to write home, and some communities offered to fill up their gas tanks and coolers, and many provided places for the water walkers to sleep. The generosity and love shown uplifted the water walkers and kept them from getting discouraged. So um, at the top left, um, I believe that's a gathering in Kingston, and in the bottom is in Little Current on Manitoulin Island, and then bottom right is in uh, Garden River, and the top right, um, I'm not 100% sure if that's in Garden, but I think it's in Wiki with Hong Kong. But um, I need to do a little bit more research on that. But I chose that picture because everyone just looks so happy in it. So, but there's more to water walking than water walking. To get her message out, to change hearts, she also had to do other work. 
She was interviewed for magazines and newspapers, on the radio and in movies, and did as much public speaking as her schedule could take. It was hard work and she didn't enjoy the limelight, but she knew it was necessary and she did it for the water. In this image, I've shared three films that Nokomis has appeared in. So on the top right was filmed by Google Earth and Thunder Bay in Peter Cameron's grade five, six classroom in 2018. And this film introduces the junior water walkers. Nokomisa and I got to visit a classroom and meet the original or founding junior water walkers. Uh, more about them later. The bottom right is a film made by Jeff Baer, um, who was at three of the four send-offs during the 2011 Four Directions Water Walk. He broke his film up into episodes and sometimes you can view it on APTM. Um, and I've also seen short clips shared on YouTube. And in the center is the documentary Water Life. And it talks about the importance of the Great Lakes and Turtle Island and threats to water. So as I previously mentioned, in 2011, we Andrew took the biggest walk ever. We walked from the four salt waters to Lake Superior. It took two difficult months to complete all four directions walking at the same time. It happened April 10th to June 11th. These next four slides are from the Water Walker book and I've added a few photos to help share the story. This is in the West. They started in the West because it was the longest distance to walk that year. And they set off from Olympia, Washington uh, by the Pacific Ocean and walked up and down the big mountain range out there. There was an inch of snow on the Water Walker's heads and the Eagle Staff while walking through the blizzards in the mountains. Horses always come to greet the water in the water walkers, so that's why I included a horse. And lots of people ask about the feet in the water I drew on this page. Um, at the end of a water walking day, Nokomis and the water walkers would often soak their feet in the water to cool them off and to take down any swelling from the long day's walk. But they also did this to maintain their close relationship with the water that they were walking near, introducing themselves and thanking that water. This is seven-year-old Mayeng and Surratt. His family, the Dorsey Lopez family, walked almost the whole distance from the Pacific Ocean in the West, joining in from the Yakima Nation in Washington and walking all the way to Lake Superior. Three generations of their family walked together, moving the water, grandparents, parents, and the three young boys that were aged 11, seven, and three. And um, uh, I learned, uh, just recently that Mayangan has uh, recently moved to um, Michigan where he's going to Central Michigan University and he was awarded a full four-year ride scholarship and he's studying the environment and focusing on the Great Lakes. So the, the, all three of the kids are, well, they're adults now, are all doing really well. So I was happy to hear that about Mayangan. Also in the West, um, I believe Grandmother Pauline Shirt has ties to your campus. So I'll share this brief re recollection of her uh, walking during the 2011 walk. I remember her daughter, Luana Harper, sending us emails needing help with her search for a van for her mother so she could join the water walkers in the West near Haver, Montana. The closest rent to rec location was in Cut Bank, Montana, a distance of 121 miles or 203 kilometers, about a three hour drive from where the walkers currently were. The next closest was in Helena, over 200 miles south of the walkers, but the walkers were heading east, so that was out of the way. To give you an idea of how expensive a water walk is, they were quoted a van for 31 days being $1,473 US. And on top of that, the water walkers had gas, food and lodging expenses. So there's lots of considerations when it comes to joining a water walk. This photo is of some of the water walkers in the West, um, including Carol Hopkins, she's on the far right. She traveled there from Ontario as well. And between walking with the water, Carol was also helping us try to find a van for grandmother Pauline, as well as making arrangements for other water walkers when it was time for her to leave. She made many sacrifices to do this work as do all the walkers. Donis Kennedy was organizing in the West for us, and her records show that Grandma Pauline joined the Water Walkers on May 3rd near Guilford, Montana, and was lead walker until May 12th, touching down in Culbertson, Montana. 10 days and many miles or kilometers for the water. Carol walked 11 days, three with Grandma Pauline Cherry, and another, oh, I'm sorry, and had to forfeit her flight home so that there were enough walkers to keep the water flowing like a river. 
So all committed quay work for the water. The next direction to take off um, was a, the southern direction. It was exactly one year to the day after the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico that both these water walkers set off from the shores of the Gulf of Mexico. In this picture, we see Charlotte Day and her mom, Sharon Day, um, who wrote the Nibby song. If you're familiar, I think I may have already mentioned that and I'll probably mention it again. And then Sharon Day, um, who's walked many lakes and rivers, and then Nokomis. And uh, this year, Sharon is going to be walking uh, Lake Superior. So it'll be the 20th, 20 year anniversary of uh, since Josephine uh, first walked it in 2003. So they're going to touch up at the end of July. So it was April 20th and it was really hot and humid down by the Gulf of Mexico. And I remember Nokomis's knee was really, really bothering her. When they stopped for break, she'd put um, ice packs, frozen nibe, on her knee to soothe it. As the southern direction walked, the Mississippi River was flooding over and the levees were threatened to burst. The worst flooding in years, shown in the uh, bottom left of this picture. The water walkers were concerned they may get washed away if the levee gave way. And I told them not to let go of the pail because it had the GPS unit on it and that's how we would find them. Next, uh, just north of the levees, um, they walked through the worst tornado event in US history. There were 360 confirmed tornadoes. A super outbreak is what they called it. The water walkers were safe and continued to walk, but those of us watching spy up spot live online were shaking and concerned for their safety. And you can see on the left, it says Mother Earth water walkers and they walked um, where that footprint is, they walked between those two tornadoes and Sharon said that it was, um, the weather was okay where they were walking. It's like the tornado started there and moved right. And the next day, uh, President Obama visited, so you can see the other pink uh, spot. And that's where he visited because that was the worst damage that was done there. So further north, a few days on, high winds and heavy rain almost blew the water walkers off the Hokia Mound as they were singing the water song. All of the directions experienced water in its many forms. In the east, there weren't blizzards and there weren't any tornadoes, bursting levees or torrential rains, but there were tears, many tears and many hardships. But the water walkers got up before the birds every morning and did their work for Neve, the water. Every one of them was determined and committed to Nibe and future generations. This top right photograph here is of clan mother Joan Bodina and Alchemist was really close to her. And the bottom right photo is of the, the bottom left and right is of the uh, picture rocks in Maine. And this is where the water walker set off from in the east. In the bottom right photo, um, the Quay on the left is one of the women that had the dream of the 2011 water walk um, of all the directions uh, coming together carrying water and her name is Madeline Hutchins. And in the middle is Nokomis' sister, Melvina Flamon. Melvina joined her for a time on every walk. And on the right is her lodge daughter, Dallas Abitong, uh, one of Nokomis' helpers. So it took the water walkers a bit to get to the north, the fourth and fourth direction to head, head off. The tractor flooded out on the way to Churchill, so they had to be rescued from their train and flown in the rest of the way to Churchill. Originally, Nokomis wanted to dog slide down from Churchill to Winnipeg, but the elders up there said it was too dangerous at that time of the year. It was super cold in Churchill and the ice was super thick. I'd like to mention we've lost many Mother Earth water walkers since the 2011 water walk. In this photo alone, three have walked on to the spirit world. Eagle Staff Carrier, J. Bell, J. Ba, Bell Redbird, Nokomis, and more recently, Esther Boss Sanderson. It was her and her sister Doris that made the arrangements for the water walkers in Churchill. Esther Baugh holds a special place in my heart too. Many times during the water walk, and I announced that I was going to archive this water walk. Esther Baugh called me on the phone. It was important to her that her and her sister's name be recorded so that their future generations would know what they did for the water. 
I remember, and this year I'm taking on less engagements so that I can do that archiving work that I promised the grandmothers. As I mentioned earlier on, I can now look back at all the work that was done in 2011 without having to breathe into a paper bag. So it's time. So once they retrieved the water uh, for the copper vessel and got back on the train leaving Churchill, they arrived in Winnipeg. They walked from Winnipeg to Lake Superior, where they converged with the other water vessels. The four directions converged on June 11th, 2011 in Bad River, Wisconsin, a journey that lasted two months, millions of footprints laid across Turtle Island and every step of prayer for Nibby for the water. And just to note, um, since I am actively archiving the 2011 water walk now, one day I'll be able to share exactly how many miles, kilometers and footsteps were prayed for Nibby during this walk for the salt waters of the four directions. And this is the Eastern direction walkers arriving at Bad River. And the beautiful banner they're carrying was specially created by the Beehive Collective in Maine and gifted to Nokomis by Kevin Grifter and the bees in Machias, Maine. And this is the Southwest and North water walkers arriving in Bad River. And this picture here is of the four salt waters coming together the Pacific Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic Ocean, and Hudson Bay. And in this photo on the left is um, Sue Chiblo. Uh, she's from Garden River, but she carried the water in the north. And then Nokomis in the center, she carried all four uh, pails. And then on the right is Sylvia Plain. She carried the water in the west, and she's from Amtanong First Nation near Sarnia. So the next day, salt water tears filled the Mother Earth water walkers' eyes as the four salt nippy met Lake Superior. Their journey was finished for now. And time for a rest before the next walk. This actually, this photo was from 2017 uh, when they took a lunch break when they were walking towards the Atlantic Ocean. And there were lots of smaller walks for the local lakes and rivers between the big 2011 water walk and the next big water walk in 2015 and it was called the sacred water walk which began began in Batan, Quebec in the east near the Atlantic Ocean and again finished in Brad River, Wisconsin on Lake Superior. 2017 was grandmother Josephine Voss final cross-country walk. It was called For the Earth and Water and that's her husband Andrew uh, carrying the Eagle Staff. as they approach. So um, this walk started at Spirit Mountain in Duluth, Minnesota, and their final touchdown was in Matan, Quebec on the East Coast. They collectively walked 3,197 miles or 5,144 kilometers. 6,394,000 footprints left on the earth for Nibe. Each footstep a prayer for Nibe, our hearts beating across the earth for her, with her. And less than one month after that final big walk, the Water Walker book was released. 
Nokomis' sneakers now took her to classrooms where she inspired hundreds of students. Nokomis was recognized many times for her courageous work. In 2015, she received the Lieutenant Governor's Ontario Heritage Award for Excellence in Conservation. She had these words to say, when we walk with the water, we pray for the water and we pray to it, we speak to it. Our minds and our hearts are with the water that we carry. We as Anishinaabe people are given responsib responsibilities, roles that we have to do. We have to take care of our mother, the earth. That is what we are doing now is taking care of our mother. We have to, especially now in this day and age where she is really suffering. She is being polluted and she is being sold. So on April 14th, 2022, there was a naming ceremony. Um, this, this school was formally called the Sir John A. McDonald Senior Public School in Brampton in the Peel District School Board. Um, it was being renamed Nibby Emosdung Public School. And on August 26th, um, there was another naming ceremony, and this school was going to be renamed to Bidasage Mandalman Public School, and it was formerly uh, also Sir John E. McDonald Public School, and this one was in Pickering and the Durham District School Board. I remember we were at a school library in Toronto when the water walker was first released. The students were comparing Nokomis to Terry Fox. I remember very clearly the look of surprise on her face. She was so humble, she never thought she'd ever be compared to someone that had such a big impact on people. I'm sure she never could have imagined that schools would be named after her. I mentioned the junior water walkers earlier. She asked everyone she met, what are you going to do about it? Knowing that it's everyone's responsibility to respect Nibe, knowing that we have all that we all have unique gifts that we can use to protect Nibe. Youth are stepping up to answer her question, and one collective we support is called the Junior Water Walkers. So the Junior Water Walkers bring kids together from around the world, sharing a common connection and goal. And their four pillars are connect, reflect, respect, and protect the water. And I'm really proud of the work that they're doing. There are well over 250 Junior Water Walker classrooms around the world now. And Nokomis' wish was always that someone would notice the water walkers and be moved to protect water. The junior water walkers were born in Thunder Bay in a grade five, six classroom. Their teacher was Peter Cameron. Last year, the Thunder Bay Junior Water Walkers Club built, filled and gifted 60 water boxes to classrooms around the world. These water boxes were handcrafted with local white cedar. Students at Pope John Paul Senior Elementary School constructed and stained the boxes in their design technology classes and during their junior water walker club meetings. Each box contained the water walker book and a journal handcrafted by students in their life skills class made from recycled paper. The water boxes were sent free of charge to 60 junior water walker classes or group school groups around the Great Lakes, across North America and throughout the world who express interest in receiving one. Over 200 classes signed up. Those classes became water box keepers for the school year and the water box furthered the inspiration for their learning journey. It also acted as a time capsule of sorts. At the end of the year, students added their reflections about water to the journal contained within the box added an artifact or two from their learning, and then they were asked to invite another class to receive the water box the following year and become junior water walkers and water box keepers. Google Earth will be used to track the journey the water boxes make from classes throughout the world. Essentially, we'll all be joining together to do something for the water, and their efforts were playing out like the water for the water. I'm so proud of the work that the junior water walkers are doing. And when Nokomis and I visited the original junior water walkers classroom in 2018, Nokomis had this to say about the work. I know they will have an impact, their hearts are in it. Many of you may know that grandmother Josephine Ba passed away um, in early 2019. Uh, but she asked all of us to continue with our work to keep going. I hope my sharing with you today a bit about Nokomis's work and the Junior Water Walkers has inspired you to start working on a stronger relationship with water. We all have unique gifts we can use to build up our relationship with water. Nokomis and the Mother Earth Water Walkers walk for the water. I write and illustrate and spot for the water. Dorian Day sings for the water. And as I mentioned, she brought the Nibby song into the world, if you're familiar with it. 
Peter Cameron and Kelsey Leonard teach for the water and we keep walking. Sharon Day was lead walker for the Southern Direction in 2011, as I mentioned, and um, she hasn't stopped walking. Every year she does many walks for many different rivers in the States. And I spot for Sharon and the Nibby Walkers. And this is one of my evening posts um, that I do uh, for the Water Walkers. Um, and this one is from the 2021 walk for the water walk that was for the water that was being affected by line three. And they walk from Lake Superior to the Minnesota North Dakota border. And you can keep up with Sharon's work at nibbywalk.org. I mentioned earlier that Sharon will be leading a walk around Lake Superior this August the 20th anniversary of when Nokomis Josephine Ba first did it. This walk will take all of August and they'll be touching up on July 31st in Duluth, Minnesota. So I'm going to start wrapping up now. This is Nokomis, the water walker. At the age many people retire, she began her work in earnest for the water. Nokomis started walking when she was 60 years old when four of them set off around Lake Superior in 2003. In 2017, at 74 years of age and living with Parkinson's, she and the courageous Mother Earth walk, water walker set off on a journey that took them halfway across her Delilah. She said over 1,000 people joined them on this walk for Nibe. She knew who water was and had a very close relationship and respect for water. She often said, we're all born of water, we're all connected with the water, we're all related in that way. Even though we're not related by blood, we're related by water. So water is very precious to us. Nokomis loved Nibe, and Nibe loved Nokomis. We'll finish where she began with a question that still needs answering. What are you going to do about it? So me, which everyone, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now, I think. And go back to Zoom. Yeah. Thank you much, Joanne. Um, that was so great. I know that you know, raising awareness for the pr preservation of water and protecting water is really near and dear to my heart. So I just want to thank you for, for joining us. And we have a few more minutes. So I noticed there's a few questions in the chat that we can get through. So Joey, if you want to take over. Thank you. And thank you, Joanne. This was such a great uh, session. So uh, Gina G asks, have you observed climate induced changes in your water walks? And if so, what changes? Oh, um, well, I'm not, I, I mean, with COVID, a lot of the water walks have been postponed, but I think in all of our own lives, we've noticed a lot of changes. Um, the one thing with water walking, they're so close and life is slowed down when you're walking. So you notice, you know, you notice medicines on the side of the road dying and you notice a lot of different things because life is a lot slower, but um. Probably around Lake Superior, I'll, after the Lake Superior this year, I'll be able to answer that better. But I think it, all, all of us have been noticing it, even if you're not a water walker. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Aranza asks, was there any experience that inspired the respect for water or was it always taught within spirituality? Um, well, in the Medellin Lodge, uh, taking care of the water. It was always the work of the women and the fire keepers were always men. During a water walk, the women um, usually always carry the pail and it's the men who carry the eagle staff for protection. Um, sometimes during the water walk, um, the women had to carry both because there weren't enough men. So it's in the teachings from the Medea One Lodge, um, how to respect water, yeah. Awesome. Um, I see Jolene has a question. Um, how would someone donate money towards the upcoming um, Lake Superior Water Walk? If there's a place? Um, yeah, sorry. I would go to uh, nibbywalk.org. That is Sharon's website. And um, I know I receive emails from her and there, there's links and stuff on there and how you can do that. Awesome. Uh, quick question. Um, have you had a chance to work with the Canadian Ocean Literacy Coalition? No. Okay. <laughs> sure, sweet. Awesome. Uh, last question. Um, with respect to companies like Nestle, who extract millions and millions of liters of water, uh, a lot of the times um, I've seen it in Six Nations, uh, a lot of different places. Do you, do you ever come across them and, and those situations on your water walks? Like, what's your, um, just any feeling towards uh, these large corporations that basically, extract water, 
for free and then charge um, a lot of money, especially in plastic bottles. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, it's just terrible. I can't, um, like during water walks, uh, Josephine Bond never let us drink out of plastic or anything. And I know there's a lot of people doing work around water bottles and Nestle and stuff. And um, it's good to help out those people and organizations because Nestle and other companies are huge, right? So it would take a, a lot of people uh, working to get together collectively to make a change. And the sad part is in some First Nation, a lot of First Nation communities, they have to drink from those plastic water bottles, right? And they're not, they're not polluting the water. It's big companies that are doing it, but we're paying the price. Like a lot of our communities are on the water. So um, it's just, uh, it sucks. It's terrible. Yeah, it's that things have to change. So, yeah. I completely agree. Um, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of changes that need to happen, but, um, but yeah, again, I thank you so much, Joanne. Um, I'll just wrap this up because I know we're at 11.59. So I wanted to thank um, all of you community members for joining us today and creating such a great discussion. Thanks to Joey for his tech support and guidance. And of course, a big Chimi Gwetch. Thank you to Joanne for sharing her knowledge with us today. Our programming would not be possible without the generous donation of an anonymous donor. And our community thanks you. And I encourage you all to register for other upcoming events or learn more about our department by visiting www.georgebrown.ca slash indigenous. Um, so on that note, Bama P, be well, and miigwech. Thank you for joining us today.